Yeah. Yeah. So now put some paint on it and do some remodeling mm -hmm. and it'll be new all over again. Mm -hmm. Our scripture tonight comes from Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has showed you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Father God, we thank you for being God and for this day of life. We know it wasn't promised to us, Lord God, but through your mercy and grace, Lord, you touched us early this morning and our eyes flew open to a new day, another gift from you, Lord God, and we thank you for it. We do acknowledge before you that we are sinners saved by your grace, Lord God, and we thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you for not dealing with us according to our sins, because if you had, we would not be here. Now we thank you for our church, and we ask your blessings upon the Bible study tonight. Bless Pastor Haynes, Lord God, and pray that you bless your word, and that we will understand what your word is saying, and how to apply it to our everyday living, Lord God. And then, God, we ask your blessings upon our church, Lord God. The membership, the ministries, the ministry leaders, Lord God. Help us to grow spiritually, Lord God, and to grow in your word, Lord God, and have a loving atmosphere that will attract others, Lord, to come and become members of that, Lord God. And we pray, God, for this coming Sunday's worship service. We're asking you for an extraordinary service. Bless the pastor and his uh, sermon on Sunday the musicians, the choir members, the ushers, the deacons, to keep us safe in the place of worship, Lord God, and we want you to get the glory from the worship service on Sunday. We lift up all uh, believers in you tonight, Lord, touch them, and keep your hands on them, Lord God, and comfort them, and help them, Lord, as they uh, go through life. Now we lift up the people that are not saved, touch Holy Spirit and convict them and let them know that you love them, you would love to be in their lives, but they must first ask. And if they ask, you'll come in and save them. We lift up the sick tonight, Lord, and pray for your healing touch. Bless doctors, nurses, medicines, and caretakers, hospitals, rehabs, wherever someone is sick, Lord God. And then we, you ask the children to leave with loved ones, Lord, comfort them as they go through this dark period in their lives. So we love you and we thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. You came all the way from heaven and took on human flesh, lived among us, and went to Calvary and shed your precious blood for our sins. And we thank you, Father God, for raising Jesus from death, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We just thank you in Jesus' name and we love you. Continue to keep your hands on us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank you for another day that wasn't promised to us. Yes, Lord. We thank you for letting us rise this morning, my Heavenly Father. And not only did we rise this morning, my Heavenly Father, and have breath in our bodies, yes. my Heavenly Father, we got up in our right minds, and we thank you for that, my Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. We thank you for putting that hedge of protection around us today, my Heavenly Father, that we were able to come into your house and worship. We thank you for letting us see another month in this year, my Heavenly Father. Because none of this was guaranteed to us, my Heavenly Father. But you thought enough of us, my Heavenly Father, to let us see it again, and we thank you for that. We thank you for just sitting on the throne and still being in control of this world. We know that sometimes we, we forget to say thank you. And tonight we just want to say thank you. Thank you for just being who you are. My Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings that you store upon us each and every day. The big blessings and the little blessings, the things that we don't even think about, that you keep doing each and every day for us, my Heavenly Father. Just like I say, just waking us up this morning, that was a blessing, my Heavenly Father. Being in our right mind was a blessing. Being able to get out of bed on our own was a blessing. And we just thank you. We thank you for just having blood flowing through our bodies, my yes, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for just letting us have a place to live my heavenly father. We thank you for having employment. We thank you for having
cars to drive. We just thank you for just being who you are and still being on the throne. We thank you for sending your son, my Heavenly yes. Father, that we may have eternal life because you didn't have to do it, but you thought enough of us to do it. And we just thank you for your unconditional love. We just thank you for just having mercy on us each and every day and just pouring down grace on us, my Heavenly Father. We're not entitled to it, but you just keep doing it. And we just thank you. We just thank you for just being there, my Heavenly Father. We're Like I said, we're not entitled, but you think of us. And we just thank you for Bethany, my Heavenly Father. We know that you're doing something extraordinary in Bethany, and we thank Thank you for it. We know that you have a master plan, my Heavenly Father, and we're just stepping back and looking towards you, my Heavenly Father, to give us our marching orders that we can do our part, my Heavenly Father, to make this the church that you want it to be, that we can fulfill this community, my Heavenly Father. We praise you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do in your darling son's name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Mr. Savior. Yes. yes. I know the seats are the seats are different. They push back or something. I couldn't figure it out. Tape on your body. You got bottom. tape on your body? No. Oh, yeah. See, it's the Bethany special. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to use it. <laughs> That's the one thing you don't want to have a new one. Yeah. Everything else, but you want to have an old body. I got so embarrassed to one of it. I wouldn't bother me a new King James Version because when I come to church, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm in New King James for Sundays, but this is my study Bible. Oh, what do you say? Special preachers, they make sure they have your old Bible. I got a Bible. Oh, man, I might have 50 Bibles. 50 Bibles. I keep my old ones. Uh, I use them. And if I use just the one, I 
I wouldn't have it with me. Very How y'all doing tonight? A day, the day that should be night. See y'all. Let me talk to the one out of the church. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> that bad girl. That bad. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Talk to the preacher, somebody like it's bad. Just being nosy. Uh-uh. He said he being nosy. <laughs> Superstitious. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? We're good. Are we going all right so far? Yes. I'm sorry to say we are a very sensitive topic to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. Talk about sex. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. <laughs> Clint say, uh oh. Talk about sex. Maybe. Talk about you and me. Robert Morris says <laughs> that he, you know, his church ain't the most loud <laughs> church. He said, but when he preached on sexual immaturity, uh -huh. I mean, sexual impurity, he said it was so quiet in there, mm -hmm. it was nobody said it. I said, I wouldn't even try to preach nothing like that in there. <laughs> See, I asked the people, how many of you uh, have a problem dealing with sexual morality personally? You know, it's about ninety percent of the, the men in the congregation. He was at a men's conference. Okay, ninety percent of the men in the conference raised their hand. So the judgment from that response, I assume the other 10% of you are battling with lying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's matter of the purity test is what we're talking about. We talked about the pride test, the pit test, the palace test. Now we're dealing with the purity test. Popular culture may declare that sexual immorality has nothing to do with character, but God begs to differ. Sexual morality has everything to do with character, and character is very important to God. That's why if you want to walk in the destiny of God has planned for you, have to understand what he says about sexual purity. Uh -oh. All right, yes. Hmm? Can you hear me? You might, you might leave after a little bit. No, he didn't hear you. He didn't hear the topic. How you doing, Miss Chess? <laughs> <laughs> I need to wait till they get in here because I can't explain every time somebody come in here with a I need full participation. Oh, uh, y'all can turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 10. We talked about it last week, but we're going to talk about it again today. Luke chapter 6, verse 10. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts 13, 22. It's just two. That's just the two. You know, we're really talking about Genesis 39. But we ain't got there yet. Acts 13, 22. Uh huh. What was the verse in Luke? Six and what? Six and ten. Sixteen. Got verse it. ten. Should have had that one from last week. Sixteen or six? <laughs> he did say. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen, 13 twenty-two. Acts thirteen. Thirteen, twenty-two. 
verse 22. For you latecomers, we're going to talk about sexual immaturity. Huh? Uh, look at you. Got it <laughs> He's like, huh? Huh? <laughs> this is the subject of this lesson is the purity test. Okay. The purity test. The purity test. I was trying to wait till Eddie Red got here to make sure. Gotta make a little adjustment. He must have found out what the subject was about. He's trying to. Avoid <laughs> he gonna turn up the. He gonna turn on the air for us. <laughs> yeah, I've been on all day. It's been cold in here today. He says it's gonna get hot. <laughs> we talking about sexual immaturity tonight. He said he, he ain't worried now because he married. He's trying to get him some legal stuff. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna see. We're gonna see. I don't think you're ready. He said, I'm ready. <laughs> Subject for the night is sexual immaturity. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go home. 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 And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. I had a preacher tell me one time that sexual sins are different because they are more personal. Why would you say that? That makes sense. Well, yeah. The sexual sin is not black from the other sins because sexual sin is more uh, natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God created us as sexual beings. Mm -hmm. And he wants each one of us to enjoy a wonderful, fulfilling sex life. Amen. <laughs> With our spouse. With <laughs> 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 every other gift God has given us. He has, we have a responsibility to stewardship this gift in a way that is pleasing to him. Mm -hmm. God is watching to see if you, if we will faithfully steward in this area of our life as well. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you're faithful in a little thing. Mm -hmm. So if, even if I use his logic, which is illogical. He's still saying, if you're faithful to the small stuff, then God can trust us with the large stuff. <clears throat> but it's very clear that God did make sex. He creates sex. He, he intends for us to enjoy it, but he only wants us to enjoy it in a marital relationship. What'd you say? I didn't say a word. Oh, well, yeah, your face said a whole lot. I no, I'm that. just listening. I had to move up a seat, another seat to hear. Thirteen twenty-two. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, "I have found." And David, the son of Jesse, 
a man after my heart who will do all my will. So we're doing it again. Let's read it again, please. She can't read, stuff. read it again. <laughs> oh. After when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, whom will do all my will. God's epitaph for David is that David is a man after his own heart. How could God possibly say that about David? Mm -hmm. Given his record. Mm -hmm. If anybody was ever impure sexually, David was impure. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was also faithful. And, and every time he got in trouble or every time he did something bad, he always prayed to God to ask him. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Not really. Huh? That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> when David went to that roof mm -hmm. and saw that man's wife, mm -hmm. he asked for the woman to be brought to him. He's yeah. king. Yeah. He had sex with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's at a distance, man, because he's king. Yeah. She's almost obligated. Tell her to go back home. She sends word to him. She pregnant. Mm. Okay. Did he pray and say he was wrong and guilty? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Not, not then. Well, no, you said every time. Did he say every time? Well, well, when he well, got once he got exposed. Once he got it's exposed. Like, wait, like, once they didn't expose him, oh, then. Man, that's like, I don't even say <laughs> man caught him in the store skin, he goes, I'm sorry. Say, you sorry you got caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you not sorry you stole it. You sorry you got caught. He, he calls the man back so the man can go have sex with his wife so he can blame him for the pregnancy. <laughs> the man refused to go home. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that to all my cohorts out there fighting. Mm -hmm. So then he sends him into the hottest part of the battle mm -hmm. and have his co-fighters pull back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know he's going to get killed. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes, David killed the man. Yeah. 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 Well, where, where is the friend? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still waiting to hear you. Yeah. See it. Yeah. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks he has gotten all scot free. Yeah. There is no way he can get caught. Yeah. No possible way except God knows. Mm -hmm. God sends his prophet to tell him. Now, look at what, what happened. He sends his prophet to tell him, but he doesn't tell him about him, he talks about another man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because see, one of the things Satan does, Satan causes us to always justify our actions mm -hmm. and take ourselves out the equation mm -hmm. so that we don't appear evil to ourselves. Mm -hmm. He really don't see where he's done a whole lot wrong. Mm -hmm. So when Nathan comes to him telling him about this man who killed this other man's pet lamb mm -hmm. and barbecued him for his guests, mm -hmm. yeah. And David said, well, who is it? Mm -hmm. Let me know who it is. I'm going to make sure he dies today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Nathan says, thou art the man. Mm -hmm. Thou art the man. Mm -hmm. Now you see why well, David is a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. Because when he realizes his guilt, he confesses. Mm -hmm. He's king. He could have easily had Nathan killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody gonna say nothing. Mm -hmm. He's king. Mm -hmm. 
He could ignore it, but he says, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty. And then they said, no, say, I'm guilty. I have sinned against God. Against thee and the only. That's why God says, <laughs> he demands he demands his own own heart. Because he admits his wrong. And he realized all sin is against God. God. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. Question. Is our country better sexually or worse? Our country? Worse. These times. Worse. Why y'all say that? Worse. Because we allow marriage. Conditions. We allow. Uh, we allow marriage. They allowed marriage back then. No, but we the we the main country that that lets other uh, genders get married. Same oh, same you're same talking same about same sex, same sex homosexual marriage. marriage. I mean, sex is more. You well, see it allow, more now. They allow open it's more, yeah. Because on TV, it's out there. Yeah. And well, back they, in the day, it was. They had say, okay, <laughs> okay. There has to be a consciousness of most of the stuff that's going on now was going on then. Yeah. It was just in the closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say what? She said where it should stay. Should have stayed there. In the closet. <laughs> oh, you say it should have stayed in the closet. Yeah, it's more in your face now. They're pushing it. Well, you know, see, I was saying that's in the closet. To some degree, uh, like, like, I said, control the narrative. Mm -hmm control the narrative that basically we're living in a time now when they, you know, people do wrong, but they still try to keep some of that stuff in the closet. Let's talk about racism. Mm -hmm. They try to keep that in the closet. They have really they have really brought it out. I mean, it has racism going on completely came out at a hundred percent. Yeah, you come out there, but yeah. you know, I mean, you know, it's like, there. Just yeah. Up. yeah, yeah, they, they want to talk about we here get that before. They talk about uh, uh, black folk reverse discrimination. They want to talk about reverse discrimination when in the Constitution, black folk are not even considered whole people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your cattle. When you don't even have, uh, they got books they're trying to take out of school now because it talks about race, slavery, mm -hmm. slavery discrimination. Mm -hmm. race discrimination. You got a church that claims that they're all about serving God, and their main complaint is abortion, abortion, abortion. But then you support somebody like Donald Trump. Mm. It don't seem like racism in the closet to me. Mm. There are some sins that were in the closet back then. And they're not as open with them, but they they doing kind of the same thing now. We got some sins that's open. And... Does anybody here think they might be guilty of some sexual impurities? <laughs> 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 I second it. It is. Why you looking around? Well, you know, I'm the only one here not guilty. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he said, "You don't no want nothing." So guilty. was a man thinking. <laughs> 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 Every day, he got it. 
I, I went until I got married. He guilty of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went until I got married. You waited until you got married. And you stopped lying at church. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Uh, huh? Say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't. I suppose I told you about Robert Morris, and he's saying most the church was real quiet that Sunday. You could hear a pitfall when he started preaching about sexual morality. The Bible says, "I wonder why they wasn't saying anything that Sunday." Mm -hmm. I said, "I suspect if I preached it at Bethany." It have been quiet too. Uh, well, then, then you got some smart people. Some of your smart veterans know when you're guilty, you say amen loud to them. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't appear to be guilty. You're doing right, really. You don't want me, y'all. <laughs> All right. Let's look at, uh, start reading Genesis chapter 39. Start at verse one and I'll stop you. Uh, so, uh, when Joseph arrived in Egypt as a captain of Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased from them by Potiphar, a member of the personal staff of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now, this man, Potiphar, was the captain of the king's bodyguard and his chief executioner. The Lord greatly blessed Joseph there in the home of his master so that everything he did succeeded. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph in a very special way. So Joseph naturally became quite a favorite with him. Soon he was put in charge of the administration of Potiphar's household and all of his business affairs. At once the Lord began blessing Potiphar for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs began to run smoothly. His crops flourished and his flocks multiplied. So Potiphar gave Joseph the complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. He had a worry in the world with Joseph there except to decide what he wanted to eat. Joseph, by the way, was a very handsome young man. <laughs> One day at about this time, Potiphar's wife began making eyes at Joseph <laughs> and suggested that he come and sleep with her. Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in the entire household. He himself has no more authority here than I have. He has held back nothing from me except you yourself because you are his wife. How can I do such a wicked thing as this? It would be a great sin against God. But she kept on with her suggestion day after day. Rebecca, Rebecca, repeat that part you just read. He said, he says, how can I do such a wicked thing as this? It would be a great sin against God. Mm. Okay. Great wickedness. Great yeah. wickedness. Mm -hmm. Great wickedness. She asked him. Great wickedness. Great wickedness. What about that? Why do you think she asked him to go to bed with her? Oh, she was a young, good looking fella. <laughs> true that, true that. <clears throat> you think uh, part of his wife was evil? Well, she's just a tool used by Satan to try to tempt Joseph. Hmm. That's a uh, I have to put it like that. Look at what he's saying. Joseph is in slavery, working with Potiphar. Potiphar puts him over his household. When we talked about the palace test, stewardship. He's a good steward. And everything he touched turns to gold. Mm -hmm. 
man's house got better, the man's house increased, his substance increased, everything is doing good, good, good. Nobody else in Potiphar's house living better than Potiphar. But Potiphar. In fact, Joseph knows more about Potiphar's affairs than Potiphar. He's doing good. And whenever you're doing good, what happens? Yeah, what you yeah. Yeah. Whenever, the, whenever you're doing good, whenever evil is from the devil will always try to come. Mm -hmm. And so what he does, he uses, he uses part of his wife. He uses part of his I want y'all to get this straight now, because you need to know there's a distinction between his wife and her moral system hmm. and Joseph and his moral system. She is not raised in the same culture as Joseph. Mm. <clears throat> so this, but, but Joseph liked uh, titled as this great wickedness is what one translation says. This great evil. It ain't that big of an evil for her. Y'all feel me? Mm -hmm. You remember, you remember when uh, Jacob's daughter went and took a walk and she met this guy and the guy raped her? Mm -hmm. Remember what happened after he raped her? No, 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 he wanted to marry her. He wanted to marry her. He said he didn't love Now you got to remember, I was telling people, as, as sexist as Israel was, <laughs> As, as badly as they treated women, Israel was superior to the treatment of women than most of the other cultures of that day. They're the only ones who had moral laws that prohibited men from mistreating their women. In most cultures, what he did to Jacob's daughter was no big thing. In those days, if they saw a woman they wanted, they could rape her. Ain't nobody say that. If you're big enough and you're bad enough, you do what you want to do, you get away with it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you got to pay the consequences if you got some bad brother. Mm -hmm. uh, but daddy want to kill you behind. But I mean, there ain't nobody going to arrest you for rape. But there was no such thing. Mm -hmm. The only reason I bring that up is because, you know, we like to label people evil good bad good i mean you understand the devil is always going to try to discourage you when you decide you're going to do the right thing and i don't care who you are you want know, this this sexual Temptation gonna come up. But Joseph was, see, he talking about Joseph was good looking, handsome. Yeah, you ain't gotta be good looking, handsome. <laughs> yeah. They were hitting on JT before he got back. <laughs> they got to be good. They got, they got, they got Joseph's ugliest sin and people hitting on him. Mm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Don't just talk about he's good looking, he tempted and all that. Hey, the devil will mess with everybody. Mm -hmm. real, she was fine. She could be fat, snack a tooth and ugly. You still would go hit on her. That <laughs> quiet big guy. Y'all don't feel like that. Read on. Uh, but she kept on, she kept on with her suggestions day after day, even though he refused to listen and kept out of her way as much as possible. <laughs> then one day, as he was in the house going about his work, as it happened, no one else was around at the time. 
she came and grabbed him by the sleeve and demanded to sleep with me. He, he tore himself away, but as he did, his jacket slipped off and she was left holding it as he fled from the house. As he what? Fled from the house. What verse did that play where he? Uh, 12. 12. 12. Read your verse 12. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. Hmm. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. And ran out of the house. And ran out of the house. He ran. He, he didn't walk. <laughs> she ran. Be joyful. Uh, and she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Right. Read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. say to run from sex sin. No other sin affects the body as this one does. When you sin this sin, it is against your own body. Haven't you yet learned that your body is the home of the Holy Spirit God gave you and that he lives within you? Your own body does not belong to you. For God has bought it with a great price. All that's verse 18. <laughs> well, it was good to you. I, I can tell. <laughs> you're talking about sex. That, that is why I say run. run. He ran. He ran. He didn't walk away. He ran away. Why do you think he ran away? Because he had already called us out. Because it's going to be hard if he don't. Yeah, you know. I don't care how strong. Spiritually, you think you are. Yeah. <laughs> you need to learn how to run. Mm -hmm. Every second, every split second, <laughs> you delay. You put yourself in a tempting position. He didn't just walk away. The Bible said he ran. Mm -hmm. A good saint ought to know when to run. Mm -hmm. He ought to know when to run. So if, you can't, if you can't beat him, know how to run away. A lot of men have fallen. A lot of women have fallen because they thought themselves to be stronger than they actually were. Yeah. When in fact they should have been running. 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 Yep. What'd you say? I want to know why I couldn't y'all say something. Why you waiting on me? Y'all scurred. You the teacher? I'm the teacher. Yeah. You didn't get the question. That's what I'm trying to see. What y'all are thinking? You know, saying me scratching you ain't itching. What's going on in your mind? I was thinking what he just read. Um, in mine, it says flee fornication. That was the first thing it said. Flee fornication. Flee fornication. Yes, yeah, he's right. running. Yeah. He knows it's fornicating. No. Uh -huh. Flee. That makes a distinction. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see well, that whole concept about fleeing. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. What do you consider sexual sin? What is sexual immorality? You know, fornication is not the same as adultery. Oh, you didn't know the difference? Yeah. Wait, so there is a difference. There is a difference. Adultery is yeah. that you're married. You're not married. You're married. Adultery you're married. is when you're having sex with somebody you aren't married to. Mm -hmm. But you're married. And fornication is. But one of the two of you are married. Fornication is when just two single people having sex. You still fornicate. Here, there's a difference. If two single people are having sex, that's fornication. If a married person is having sex with another married person or with a single person, that's adultery. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You don't feel it? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all fornicate? The <laughs> she she going to plead the fifth over there. This is too going to make the world better in this area of sexual immaturity. Well, I don't think I we can. Revert back to the Ten Commandments. Say what? Well, people revert back to the Ten Commandments. Oh, you're supposed to, we're supposed to read that too. I don't think, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a way to go back. Not back, but there is a way to make it better. It's all wait, in the wait, mind. Wait, 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 before you say anything, let's do what he said. I want y'all to read what the Ten Commandments said about it. It's in Exodus. Is it chapter 20? Chapter 20. Yeah. Christmas. Which one is it? Which verse? I got it on here somewhere, but got lost in all these other verses. Verse 17. Seven. 20 verse, and 17. Verse 14. Read verse 14. Just read all of it. Verse 14 says, you shall not commit adultery. And okay. 17 says, you must not be envious of your neighbor's house. Or yeah, covet, the one on covet. Covet, yeah. Won't do sleep with his wife or want to own his slave. Is that 14? Yeah, that's 17. 17. 17, yeah. 17. yeah. Yeah, that's adultery, you're right. But then that's mm -hmm. adultery, too. Mm -hmm. that's, if you're coveting is anything, Mm -hmm. But included in the anything is his wife. Mm -hmm. Now, what were you saying, Don? How are we going to get around that? Um, it's, I, I believe it starts first in the mind. So you have to get control over um, things, you know, like, let me see how I can put it. It's thinking like God. Okay. The same concept we've been talking about before. Satan puts a negative thought in your mind, yeah. God already has a right thought in your mind. Mm -hmm. If you think like God, you think in God's thoughts, 
I'm going to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. That's what was wrong with Joseph. Joseph saying, how can I do this great wickedness? Mm -hmm. But to her, that wasn't no great wickedness. To her, that was just having some whoopee time. Mm -hmm. If you're faithful over a few things, if you're faithful over the little stuff, see, if I, I tell you, the preacher said, well, you know, that's natural. That's a physical sin. That's a natural sin. Well, you know, I don't care who you are, if if the devil gets with you long enough, he gonna allow you to conjure up some uh, some thoughts mm -hmm. for you excusing your behavior mm -hmm. to do that which is ungodly. You're gonna rationalize it, alt, uh, alter it, and when you get through, you're going to be just like David. When Nathan comes to him and describes what he does exactly, he does not recognize it. Mm -hmm. He didn't see it. Nope. How do you know he didn't see it? His response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bring him to me. He's going to die before the day is over with. Mm -hmm. He's talking about somebody else. Mm -hmm. He's judging someone else and hadn't even begin to realize he talking about himself. Hmm. And not until Nathan says, thou art the man. Because that's what the devil does. He allows us to fix in our mind what we're doing is not what we're doing. Hmm. We're not like everybody else. So I think about Eve there. Eve? What about Eve? Number one. I, I think the devil, you know, he told me that well, nothing's going to happen to her if she ain't that. Well, he, he basically says, you're not going to die. Yeah. He lied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. But that's what the devil does. The devil manipulates the truth to get you to alter your behavior mm -hmm. to go contrary to that which God has told you. Mm -hmm. And it, it, what makes sexual misconduct so tempting mm -hmm. is that Satan offers you something that is pleasurable to you. It's pleasure. Good time. Man, that can't be the sin. That's too, that's too good for it to be a sin. How can something that nice be a sin? Because it blocks everything else. So what? It'll block everything else. So you can't function right. And well, you're making choices that aren't. Point to point, he's making. First of all, it's going to contaminate your family life. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're going to have sex outside of your marriage without messing up your marriage. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to hear y'all? Y'all getting quiet on me? Y'all fizzing out? Y'all fizzing out? Mm -hmm. I'm like gonna be <laughs> Say what? Somebody's gonna be greedy. Somebody gonna do what? Get greedy. Get greedy. Greedy. Get greedy. You ain't gotta get greedy. So <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you talking about like the when the woman called the wife and talked about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. The truth about it. It's possible for a man to have an outside woman and the wife knows nothing about it and it still contaminates his marital relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
It interferes with his relationship with his kids. And take it from me, the truth eventually will come out. And how are you going to sit your son down and tell him to be faithful to his wife when he knows you weren't faithful to his mom? It can affect you on your job. Oh, yeah. Impurity is always lust and not love. Anybody want to talk about that? No, had a lesson this quiet, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual impurity is always motivated by lust mm -hmm. and not love. But you swore you was in love with her. <laughs> <laughs> Real body mean no better. I, I, I'm sorry, I just love her. I love her. And this is one I like playing. I'm in love with two women. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them both the same. Yeah. She said, yeah. Yeah. It's impossible. You heard that before? It's no, I'm talking about this. Impurity is always less than I love. Yeah. Always. There is a difference. Y'all ain't no fun. Y'all ain't talking, man. I thought sure y'all gonna do better in the morning session. <laughs> Had all kind of arguments with them. <laughs> Coach, I, I didn't tell them day the thing like I told y'all. I kind of stepped through it one by one. David, did David have to pay for his sin? Yep. Yeah. 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 How did he pay? He had a lot going on. Did he lose his son? Yes, all messed up. Did God forgive him for his sin? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if God forgave him, I had all of that <laughs> stuff going on. He said if he forgave him, how did yeah. he have all of this stuff going on? What's all this other stuff going on? Yeah. It's David doing all that. Yeah. When you, when you see him, that brings about a, a reaction. A reaction. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather say it this way because you're about to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, mess it's, up. A chain, it's a chain reaction. <laughs> God yeah. forgave David for his sin. But that did not eliminate his sin's consequences. God will forgive you for your sin, but you still have to face your consequences. God says, the baby y'all had going to die. And David started fasting. He stopped bathing. He changed no clothes, laying on the ground, begging God <coughs> to let the baby live. Mm -hmm. Did all he could. They were worried about him. They couldn't get him to eat. Couldn't get him to do anything. They thought he was going to basically hurt himself, make himself sick. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get but I think say like seven, eight days. He didn't do it. 
But then he finally see him whispering. Because the problem they had when the baby died, they were scared to tell him. If he acting like a fool like when the baby is sick, can you imagine what he going to do when he found out he's dead? When we saw him whispering, is the boy dead? And he said, yes. And he shocked him because he jumped up, went, took, jumped in the tub, took my bath, put on his clean clothes, had all the cologne on, smelling all good. Fine, come and say, hey, bring me some barbecue. He brought him some food and he ate. He said, we confused. The boy was sick and you were carrying on like you were going to die. And then when you found out he dead, it's not like you celebrate. He said, when the boy was sick, I was begging for God not to kill him. But when God took him, there's nothing I can do about that. He can't come to me. I don't see him again, I got to go to him. Mm -hmm. So ain't no sense to me mourning now, because ain't nothing I do gonna change that. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? It's 8 o'clock. <coughs> no questions, no comments? God loves you, doesn't want you to go on the road to destruction. That's what sexual immaturity is. The road to destruct, destruct, destruction. <laughs> destruction. Immaturity will affect your relationship with God. That's what's been going on. Hmm. I remember that story when um, that boy Hammond wanted to go to bed with his sister, his brother's sister. Tamar. Mm -hmm. He was in love with Tamar. Got David to tell her to come pick her for food. He raped her. When he raped her, he don't want her. He hated her. sister was Tamar. Ammon wanted to go to bed with her. He had to think he was in love, but he's that there. This guy talks to him. That's another thing. You get friends who can skip you to do the wrong thing. Said, Man, you the king, son. Tell the king. Let her come fix some food. And then you can do what you want to do with her. Man. So David come talk to him. He pretends to be sick. He said, let her come and fix me some meat. So David, you know, David is not thinking that that's what he does. When she comes to fix him some food, he said, come lay with me, just like the one. He said, well, don't do nothing like that, say you. You know, I'm, you don't want to go to bed with your sister. You know, but then, you know, um, it's foolish. Ask, ask the king to let me be your wife. Because what you talk about is foolish, you know. Want to be with your half sister and your brother's sister? They both had the same daddy, different mamas. But he is at the house, so he forces her to have sex. He rapes her. And the Bible said, now he told his buddy he was in love with her. After he rapes her, he says he hates her.
I guess you didn't like what he what he did. Mm. Okay. Well, your brother didn't take too kindly for that, so brother gonna put some hurt on me. Long story short, he killed me. And, and some other people killed him. Was it chest? You don't like that story, I'm chest. What's really on y'all man? <laughs> I already know what's on your mind, Eddie Reyes. Oh, them tomato plants. Thank you. <laughs> Say what? Them tomato plants. Them tomato plants. As long as you're talking more water, I got to put on it. <laughs> <laughs> he just said you can't put that water on. <laughs> I wish them tomato plants could solve your problem. <laughs> Ain't got enough tomatoes in the world to fix that problem. Could be like JP. JP said he used to be in that chick, but now he married. Mm -hmm. So all he doing is legal. Mm -hmm. oh, well. yeah, so he had to have fun legally. <laughs> he ain't got to apologize. Oh, you didn't say that? You legal now, so just be quiet. You oh, you saying? Are you saying to us that you didn't do that before you were married? Jesus, I love you. <laughs> Questions, comments, I'm gonna let y'all go. I don't have nothing. Well, this is a good discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I mean, you know, it's yes there in the Bible. It would tell yeah, you. Yeah, it was it was yeah. it came up. I had to deal with yeah, it. Yeah. It's something that's applicable. It's not mm -hmm. like it's not relevant. Yeah. Everybody in here got to deal with it. Yeah. We all guilty at some point or another. We ain't even gonna admit it, but I'll yeah. say that for us. Everybody guilty except the person who's been to raise his hand or her hand. I didn't think nobody raised their hand for that. Well, I sure gonna call you a liar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, even, you know, it's in the Bible where it says that uh, if you even look at a woman and undress it, you commit it. Adultery, yeah. yeah. I could have brought that in, but that ain't gonna. You ain't got to talk about no mind. We ain't talking about no mental adultery. We talking about suckers going to die. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about no just thinking about it. I'm talking about Negroes who done it. Mm -hmm. Who doing it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastor Hayes. I can raise my hand. Not just you, baby. Everybody in here, including your pastor. If you tell the truth be told. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, you know ain't nobody... Guiltless, and I don't have to take no senses. I don't have to listen to no gossip. I don't have to know no. Everybody here guilty, you know. But see, the thing is, is that you gotta, you gotta, you know, that for things you've done in your past, the trouble it causes, and especially when you're dealing with adultery versus fornication. Mm -hmm. Fornication is bad enough, but adultery is even worse because yeah. it gets complicated with other people. Mm -hmm. What if nobody else is involved? Well, even when there's fornication, you always got somebody else involved. Mm -hmm. You know, you got mamas, daddies, amies, uncles, you got friends. You know, very seldom. You're going to be sexually intimate with somebody without them telling, without them telling somebody. For it's our secret. Uh, I, mean, I ain't seen too many our secrets. Most of the jokers gonna talk. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, if Eddie Red is gonna be able to get her, he got to tell somebody. That's a fine lady. He want to make sure somebody knows. <laughs> Can't keep that to myself. 
No, you got a woman. So I'm like you. I just see it a different way. She likes to make. <laughs> 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 you, got, you, got, you got some women the same way. They want to they brag. They want to brag. They want to brag. So, you know, you, you, you know, I say, well, if I ain't doing nobody, I'm just, just, it's a sin against myself, against me. Well, no, you can't sin just against you. All sin is against God. <laughs> ah, yes, ah, yes. I was trying to figure out how y'all gonna handle this. I must say I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, I, uh, I, I think we did good too, yeah. Ed Red. Yeah. 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 I just thought y'all would be more talkative than you were. Nobody yeah. wanna put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. I, I can understand that. They didn't put themselves out there today either. Y'all did more than they did. In that regard, but we had a pretty, pretty good discussion. Uh, especially one lady was upset that uh, I was talking about Potiphar's wife not being in the same position. She thought that she read a sinner to hell, you know. Which, uh, hmm. Well, you know, like I tell people, you can't take an Old Testament character. And judge them with New Testament doctrine. Yeah. It's two different situations. See, and the same by the same token, you can't take a heathen, or I should say, for the Lord, a Gentile who has no background with God, mm -hmm. no recollection of God, training with God, and judge them with the same measuring stick as you would somebody who has a relationship with God. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus had to preach when he went to hell. Because he had to get everybody on the same plane. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I saw you looking at your watch. I saw him with the one that looked at her watch. Yeah, I'm looking at your watch. No, I got a message. That's why I looked at mine. Yeah, I got a message too. Oh, really? I can, see, I can see this. What was the message say? Well, I, I can't tell you what my brother I told me. He's watching. Uh huh. <laughs> And do you get the messages on there? Yeah, the comment that's on there, don't worry about it. Oh, you want to see the comments? Huh? No, it was a comment and it, it didn't make sense to me. You didn't want to. I understand. We'll talk about it later. Because yeah. I had some craziness today, too. Uh, questions, comments, sick report? <laughs> Anybody heard from uh, Sister Bennett? Had a report today, some people talked to her. Sister, brother, sister Evans. You talked to him? No, I didn't talk to him. Did he tell him he's going to call right with this? And he left it at you? Yeah, I couldn't get him. So I just you know, figured out he was real busy, so I didn't. Well, I talked to him. He talked to him. Yeah. Is Miss Evans still? She's still in rehab. She's doing all right, but she's, you know, she's having some difficulty trying to get stronger. And he asked for us to give her some, some uh, quiet time. Father, she's trying to get better. She don't need a lot of visitors. Don't need a lot of phone calls. So just pray for her. And you know, most people, some people, you know, when they know that kind of condition, they're trying to get rehab. They don't want to have a camera on the whole time. So mm -hmm. give us some privacy. Some privacy. I couldn't say. Mm -hmm. Give us some privacy. Yeah. yeah. What you looking back here for? No, which, I'm which about the comment. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. Oh that's the comment that y'all talking about the same comment? Yeah. So that was for him. Let me see this comment. Try to fill oh, that's not the that picture. That didn't make sense. That don't make no sense at all. Oh, this one. Chester, you got a question? Yeah, I Change your mind. <laughs> we'll talk after benediction. You need to turn the camera? Uh, no, because I'm going to say, man, watch. Uh, 
Let's so stay in there. Right. So stay. some prayer. No, no. Actually, you were almost the last one, but Eddie Red came after you. But we don't let you do it. Since you're such a rush to leave, I'm going to let you give the closing prayer. Thank you. God, we thank you for tonight. Lord God, we thank you for the lesson that was taught, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to uh, remove the sexual immortality spirits, Lord God, and continue to allow us to dwell in the spirit, Lord God. Speak to our hearts and our minds on a daily basis, Lord God. Allow us to take this word, Lord God, and put it into our daily lives. Bless you to bless our pastor. Bless this church, Lord God. Bless us on Sunday. Allow us all to make it home safely. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you all for coming. I enjoyed oh, that. Oh,